Hello, uh, my name is Gerald Werner. I'm here together with Toshio Muramatsu to chair this session or moderate the session of a live case transmitted from Toyashi Heart Center. We are joined in the panel by Ishiro Hamanaka, Scott Harding, who will join later, Yong Yong Lee, Sydney Lowe, and uh, welcome to the panel. And I think we don't want to uh, miss much time. We will hand over to Dr. Kenya Nazu, who will conduct the live case at the Toyohashi Heart Center. Kenya, please. Uh, good, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Heart Center. Today, I prepared the LDAD instant occlusion case. So uh, Dr. Habara will present the case. Yeah, so the case number one, so uh, uh, the patient is a uh, 70 years old male. So uh, clinical indication is a cerebral angina and caused by LAD CTO. And uh, I will show uh, 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 cardiac findings. So this is a baseline angiography. So uh, you can see it's uh, already proximal CTO, uh, that is as uh, instant occlusion. And uh, so there you can see the collateral from the so circumflex to the so diagonal branch. This is the diagonal branch. And uh, this is a cranial view. That is a diagonal branch. And uh, so you can see the chip of the wire. So that uh, so this uh, LED CTO is uh, so a little bit strange. I will show later the detail of the so index PCI. Uh, this is a RCA angiography, and uh, there is a collateral from the PD branch to uh, LED. This target of LED is a very narrow, and uh, so you can see the some collateral channel and uh, the. But uh, so this septal channel is uh, very uh, near to the so GTO exit site. And uh, so there is uh, some collateral to the uh, PD branch to LED distal. And uh, this is a uh, final image of the so about the so this is a uh, five years before. And uh, so I want to uh, introduce the so uh, previous PCI about the uh, five years before. I, I want to change the PC, so please wait a few, uh, few seconds. This is a, a case of the, this patient of uh, five years before. The patient come to our hospital about the so unstable angina. So target is a uh, uh, LAD, this portion, and uh, very uh, wow. uh, unstable plaque. So that uh, so uh, the uh, operator in, inserted uh, so this, that is a filter wire, filter wire, and uh, so KVT was performed at the proximal site. And uh, implanted the stents. And uh, after that, uh, you can see the uh, no flow because of the so filter wire. So that the so uh, patient complains the chest pain and uh, uh, ST was so elevated. So that uh, the operator uh, quickly uh, removes the uh, filter wire, but the filter wire was catched at so edge of the stent and so you can see the stent deformation at the so distal portion and so the operator cannot remove the, this filter wire so easily and uh, <clears throat> so that so the operator inserted another wire and uh, Balloon was directed at the portion, and uh, it takes a very long time, very long time. But uh, so finally, the uh, filter wire could removed uh, the proximal site. This two marker is a so filter, filter wire, the filter portion, 
and uh, so the um, filter portion could be removed. Like that. Uh, now, now removed. But uh, so a uh, chip of the uh, filter wire was uh, uh, remaining. But uh, so uh, balloon after that. Uh, was uh, fully dilated. And uh, this is the final slide. So what uh, the stent is uh, this form yep. by the this procedure, right? Yep. So that uh, so uh, next uh, two week later, we check the OCT this stent. So this is a uh, OCT OCT image. So and uh, uh, this is a, a septal branch, just uh, distal of the stent, and uh, this around here. So this is a uh, stent distal edge, and uh, you can see that so many struts. That is uh, so unusual. I think that so uh, I don't know the detail of the so figure of the stent, but uh, uh, this is an image of the stent deformation. Around there is uh, so many strut, and uh, so from uh, nine o'clock to twelve o'clock we can see the so many strut, but uh, from one o'clock to uh, six o'clock we can see the so stent strut. And so that is a so diagonal branch. And the proximal site from the so diagonal branch is a stent deformation we cannot uh, observe. So that the stent is a so circle and the uh, uh, strut is also uh, normal. Those are so our so index PCI about uh, five years back. Thank you very much. So I can show you that today's angiogram. So please back to the, okay. This is really a very unusual story. Um, yes. And uh, so we assume that the wire was left inside the lumen. I thought that we saw the wire on the OCT. It was not covered by a new stent, I understand. I think so. Because that would be an idea and if you left the wire inside that at least you put it to the wall mm. by uh, covering it with a second drug eluting stent. Yeah. But I think it, uh, I think it, uh, the uh, tip of the wire is compressed by the, the form of the stents. Maybe the, we can see the, uh, the wire chip is... Uh, uh, tip of the wire is seen the uh, uh, diagonal side. In the OCD finding, also uh, di diagonal side, we can see the so many strut, ma maybe including the some uh, tip of the wire. So I think it, uh, maybe it, uh, wire itself is uh, compressed by the deformed stance, but I'm not sure that exactly. And do we have any idea when the reocclusion might have happened? Uh, maybe the stent was deformed, and that means shortening the stents. So originally, maybe stent is uh, covered by the, the distal to the uh, first septal. But after putting back to the filter wire, the stent is before, deformed and shortening. So that is one of the reasons of the reocclusion of the distance. But do you have a, a, a time frame when the patient became symptomatic again? Maybe, maybe decent is the humans. Okay. So, uh, shall we ask the panel what would be their approach? Yeah. Gerard, I have uh, two questions. It's okay? Yeah, sure. Yes, and uh, the, the first one is why, why the filter was done? <laughs> for the, <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the PCI. So, mm. the second one is uh, so it is uh, it is uh, better to the covers stand to instant uh -huh. after the previous procedure. Mm -hmm. So why just only balloon to, 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 to to compress to the remaining uh, uh, filter wire? Yeah, I fully agree with you. <laughs> yeah, but, but that uh, is still but built. the filter wire is still 
uh, well used in Japan because we don't have the 2B3A, we uh -huh. cannot use. So that's why the, for the uh, emergent case, still now the, in Japan, the uh, filter wire very, very frequently used. Amano how, Sensei, how, how do you use the filter wire? Uh, it depends on the region, of course, but uh, I think the most in uh, thrombotic uh, occlusion oh, case, in ACS case, maybe uh, more than 50 percent we use the people oh, yeah that is surprising mm -hmm. yes yes that is a very different point compared to the other country but we would do a thrombus aspiration uh, if we have uh, thrombus in an acs situation yeah. mm -hmm. actually oh. i must say that yesterday in a bypass i used the filter wire for the first time probably in 10 years and i <laughs> not knew how to operate <laughs> Yeah, that's a completely different uh, yeah, situation in, in Japan. That is the only time then when we still use the filter wires. Yeah. But anyway, now let's yeah. approach the technique because it's an interesting yes. case. We have a stent which makes it sometimes easier to navigate a wire, but mm. uh, not necessarily because the distal deformation and we have retrograde options. So, Sydney, how would you approach? Antigrade or retrograde? Well, uh, my, my concern is at the moment there's a uh, quite a lot of work to be done and uh, uh, there are some left main disease so obviously if you're successful you have to stand across the left main and uh, restent across this deformed segment and reset it uh, the retrograde option uh, is good but obviously you can be through stent strut as well because it's, been, it's a little bit deformed um, and even anti-grade there's also a risk of going in and out of stent strut and so there's that's the one thing that may make it quite difficult but I guess that, uh, uh, you know, imaging would need to be done, and it's pretty routine. If you get through either way, you can try to readjust yourself so that you are as luminal as possible. If, if the, the equipment can pass, then you can restent it, even though you may have to crush it, oh, yeah, it. depending on what That's you need. Right. And I think a dual lumen catheter either way may be useful, uh, particularly anti-grade. Um, but anyway, you, you start a bit anti-grade and see how far you would get, because obviously there may still be a reasonably tractable lumen, uh, compared to your previous OCT. Um, you I, think, uh, I think that sometimes in, in, uh, in X-ray, you got a Shimatsu. I'm not sure if you can do a clear stent or a, um, a stent boost way to look at the stent if where your eyes are. Because sometimes that helps a little bit to see if you are in the, in the stent lumen uh, because it's a bit clearer. But of course, you need a two marker thing and dual lumen catheter may be useful for that purpose, uh, positioning in the stent and, and seeing where your wire is. That may be a little bit helpful for the integrate wiring part. I am sure that there's some integrate work and it's going to be rapidly retrograde and then it'll be an establishment of hopefully a good lumen cross through the stent. I think it's going to be a bit more retrograde and that you need to image and then, of course, stent from left main uh, to mid LED. Uh, of course, there's also diagonal. It's a lot of work to be done. The diagonal probably should be reconstructed as well because it looked like a big vessel on your previous angiogram. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? I oh, will ask uh, Kenya to this uh, discuss his approach now. Okay. So anyway, the, I will show you today's angiogram. So this is a cranial and a spider. So <laughs> so hey, you can see the very good collateral from the uh, circumflex and the PD branch. So, but the first septal from the PD branch uh, is connected very proximal to the distal end. And the uh, well, second one, the third one is also connected. And also you can see the some uh, wire chip and also some complex morphology around the bifurcation. That is other problem, I think so. So next, please. So this is our cranial. It's our cranial is also same uh, findings. Okay, next please. Pure more cranial. Yeah, our It's our aocodal. We can see the very complex morphology around the distal end, uh, proximal end of the uh, distal lumen. So you can see the some some uh, feeding. So, but uh, we are not sure that uh, exactly this is the straight or the some uh, branches uh, overlapping or something. 
So anyway, I want to study from the antiquated approach, of course. But the issue is the uh, um, so guide wire to select uh, both branches sometimes very difficult. So anyway, the distal penetration is one of the issue of this kind of the case. So the, I want to study. Oh, okay, just, uh, do you uh, plan to use IBIS to uh, to navigate uh, into the center of the stent, or just ah. you rely on Enjo because the stent uh, is a very good target? So that you mean in the proximal proximal side? Yes. Uh, okay. The spider, please. So in the spider, we can see that some stump uh, just orifices the LAD. Then we can see the uh, very small septal branch. So maybe I'm not sure that you can see the on the screen, but uh, uh, there is some channel uh, from the just orifice to the very small proximal septal. So yeah, yeah, uh, we, okay. I can, I can so see. That means that this is not no stump. So we don't okay. need to the IBUS. Okay. And then you have the IV, uh, the stent as a good marker. Uh, yes, sure. In fact, the wire is a good marker, actual lumen, right? Because it was luminal before. So the actual tip of that wire is actually lumen. Or was lumen before. Yeah, yeah, sure. So now is I'm using the, just a shim. So... But assume I have uh, some resistance, of course. So I want to change to the Gaia next one. And your microcatheter is a Corsair? Uh, yes, this is Corsair Pro. So Gerald or, or uh, Sensei, would you actually just go for the lumen? Because obviously it's marking the, the CTO, that, that wire tip. Um, and so you would just try to track it to that tip and follow along the path. Is that what we're trying to do? Ramatsu sensei, what is your take on that? Yes. Sure. I also do the, the first way as a guy at first. So maybe I don't know the the feeling of the tips. Uh, usually the instant content is a uh, Relatively soft. I hope so. Yes. But sometimes uh, in stentary uh, the occlusion case, uh, we have a very uh, uh, something very very hard hard thing, uh, hard contents inside the stent in, in some occasion. So sometimes we need uh, at least the guy next two uh, in the situation. So I don't know how. In this case, it is. So maybe in both that uh, Andrew, the wire is located in the center of the stents. Mm -hmm. That is not a bad situation. And also wire a little bit rotated freely. Yes. Really? Yes. I think, yeah, I think right. this uh, is certainly an occlusion that is not so long mm -hmm. standing, mm -hmm. but I think the future that we will have is yeah, more no, and no, no, no. more are you, are you secondary uh, occlusion because of atherosclerosis. These will be the, the stiff or tight stenosis and the hard stenosis. In fact, I did not only use a filter wire, but uh, two days ago, I had two <laughs> stent occlusions that were 10 years old. And then you have calcium inside, but here it doesn't look like calcium inside. Yes, yes, yes. Did you have to rotor, Werner, Gerald, uh, or uh, do something like a uh, laser through your stent? No, no, it was possible to get through with a Gaia 3. Uh, <laughs> but we use uh, shockwave in these situations. We have shockwave available. If it's a very tight stenosis, sometimes you still have underexpansion. Mm -hmm. which here certainly is not the case because it was checked by OCT. It's a perfect expanded stent, I guess. So, Gerard, what, what do you uh, choice for the calcium region, the shock wave or rotabrations? 
Well, if I get through with a, a device, then no, uh, then shockwave because rotoplation, you need a tight lesion. I think inside stents, it is preferable to use shockwave. It's more effective. But if you have a very tight calcium where you not even pass with, the, or the smallest balloon doesn't expand, then certainly we will rotoplate. So you. Well, lose your backup a little bit. What yes. is the guide? This is a uh, SPB 3.5. So, okay. uh, of course, I tried to the, engage the 3.75, but uh, impossible. So, I use the uh, SPB 3.5. So, this, this is a afraid. sign that you have hit resistance now? Or yeah, no, no yeah, I want to uh, advance the Corsair, but uh, have some resistance. Okay. But, well, yeah, it's very free. Yeah, but the Corsair going so far inside makes also sure that you are certainly inside yeah. the struts. So the problem in this case is that the, the, the size of the distal part, the, the distal lumen, two lumen is very small. So uh, just beyond the stent, uh, I think it's uh, very difficult to select. Yes, I think what, so. That's uh, where you might need uh, the wire as a target, the distal wire. It's a very good as, target. Yeah, as Sydney said, it's uh, inside the lumen still. The other problem is that you know, it's, it's the bifurcation um, you know, at the distal end, and uh, we want to look after both of those branches. Yes, yeah, Scott, I think that's correct. And I think, in fact, I could see that you have to go through a little bit proximal, uh, you know, where it, where it bends a bit in the LED. And you may have to wire, and it looks like you could wire uh, yes. uh, into that if you can. So uh, maybe you have to establish some diagonal access. It was pretty big territory, wasn't it? Yeah, as you said, Sydney, uh, the work comes after passing the wire. It's um, several bifurcations to be treated here. Mm -hmm. Including the one of the questions is uh, the wires being quite free to this point, but if there is difficulty uh, passing the wire into the true lumen dis distally, how long will you persist? Uh, I guess you know the the danger here is whether we uh, you know disrupt the bifurcation if we end up having to do extensive wiring, uh, and I, I guess it's very reasonable with the wire moving so easily to try and wire integrate, but the um, question is how quickly would you move to retrograde with the bifurcation there? Yeah, but it's, it's still early days. Yeah. yeah I, uh, the problem uh, obviously is to follow with a Corsair, is it correct? Yes, but Corsair cannot go. So maybe why yeah, is go inside in the W. Oh, but, uh, but the image clearly tells us that it, it's center. Okay. Maybe it's already crossed, we'll see. Yes, now this is septal You go branch. into the septal. Yes. Okay, now you are through. Very Perfect. nice, very nice. But I don't want to advance the Gaia next one because the distal two room is very diffuse. Sometimes Gaia the, can make it the damage with the now uh, diffuse region side. So, if possible, I want to advance the Corsair in this situation now. But, that... but if it doesn't go, maybe you have to start dilating the entrance into the stent to reduce the res uh, resistance and then mm. uh, switch to the microcatheter back. So, anyway, I want to dilate it by the small button. Why your tip is a free, feeling of the free. The wire is free. Hmm. Yeah, I, th I think we saw uh, clearly it's uh, inside the lumen by the contralateral injection. Well, I think Nas, Dr. Nas's technique is it, not easy and not, not uh, difficult to pass the wire <laughs> to the distal side of this room. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, sometimes we can make it a very big dissection, this kind of dissection. 
Yeah, that's important. Um, as discussed before, entry, exiting the stent, you must be absolutely sure. Uh, if it doesn't work, you have to revert to retrograde. <laughs> So maybe it's very difficult to to deliver the, the balloon also, I guess. Mm. But, but you already dilated the proximal segment with the, the microcatheter, the Corsair. Should That's be possible. Mm. I think if you're going to pass the balloon, I would usually do some sort of clear stent or step boost before I inflate the balloon, just to get a really <laughs> Because if you are through one stent strap, then the balloon, even in a small balloon crossing, uh, may deform the stent with the balloon inflation. So that's a nice check. This good here again. So now it's a 1.5 balloon. It's a little bit distal. So I want to dilate it here. Jigo, jigo. Still, we have some resistance around here. I would ask Scott whether he would have taken the cross bus through this one. <laughs> cross bus? Yeah, well, it's in the ABCTO algorithm, but sometimes uh, we bring it out just for a yeah. Not not in this case because you've got diffuse disease. Yeah. Um, where that works best is where you have instant restenosis without sort of diffuse proliferative uh, restenosis. And uh, obviously here you've also got a distal bifurcation. So look, you know, it, it's something that we use occasionally um, in the right circumstance. But you know, I love better, Joe, diffuse though. proliferative. Uh, uh, um, Instant restenosis is definitely bit dealt with better by wiring. I think, especially here, when the delicate issue is yeah. the right exit, I wouldn't trust a bulky device. I would only trust a sensible wire maneuver. Also, you can you can insert the brew inside. Yes, I, I can dilate the all all of the inside of the stents. Mm. So maybe the magic acid can be passed now. So I try to cross the color barrel. So. It was also good that, that the wire entered into the septal first. So you kind of know that you're actually luminal into the septal. Mm. And now you switched uh, to a soft wire, but uh, and then you want to certainly engage the diagonal branch with yeah. wires. Yeah. Yes, of course. After checking the IBAS, I want to see, I want to understand the morphology of the bifurcation side. Shumbru, shumbru, anything? Shumbru, that's it. The IBAS will be very interesting. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, uh, in the let me ask. Oh, sorry. Let me ask uh, the panelists um, about their experience in, in stent occlusion and the prevalence. I, I have the idea from the recent year that we were believing that stent occlusions become less and less. But uh, as I mentioned uh, with my two cases this week, I think we come into an area era where we have a different kind of stent occlusion and it's still 
in the range of 10, 15% of our cases. What is the experience in Japan, in uh, down under? Actually, uh, so uh, in recent years, I have a very little experience of instant occlusion. Uh, because uh, the, after the second generation DES era, uh, actually, so very rare. But uh, uh, as I told, as I mentioned uh, just before, uh, in some case, the, the content inside the stem, uh, created the stem, is a very hard plaque, plaque or something, calcium or something. So, uh, Sometimes we need to use the Gaia second or some more uh, stiffer uh, wire in this situation. I, I, I agree with you. I think I'm seeing a few more, or, or more chronic ones. And I suspect that when I, when I do them, a lot of them actually under expanded stents. They've gone away with it for some years. And I think that now it pushes me to do more in all the cases I'm doing. Because if it goes in like the first time, that's probably less likely to happen. I don't know. The combination of new atherosclerosis, even though it's some years after the original DES, like some cipher stents, a couple of cases of my own, I think, I was undersizing. And, um, and so essentially, um, I think that now pushes you to imaging first procedure, image stents, because I think they're coming back a bit later. And it's a combination of new atherosclerosis, risk factors, and, and underdeployed, undersized stents. Ish. I think that's that's true, and certainly something I've learned from the Japanese. You know, obviously got the highest imaging rates in the world, um, and what we've seen is with an increase in imaging, we've seen less restenosis, at least in the short to medium term. But um, we're seeing the IVIS now, so we'll have a look at that. Kenya, yes. let's talk us through the IVIS. Yes. Or you do a recording, and then we. Ah, yes, I, I can show you the own uh, live the live images. Yeah. Now is the uh, IBUS is located the distal and the to lumen, so you can see that. But the IBUS, even IBUS, I cannot advance around there. So there is a very diffuse region. I think so. So, so was this the the wire that we saw? Was the the old wire here? Mm, I can show you the IBUS at, images. At Around there, maybe we can see the something. It must... Yeah, it must um, be the old wire at four o'clock. Yes. But, because the IBUS uh, wire is at one. Is this a diagonal at 10 o'clock? えっと、セプタルとかやろう。セプタルかかねえな。セプタル、あれがセプタル。どこだろう?セプタル、あれがセプタル。あれか。Okay, but I think at at 3 and 3 o'clock that is the old wire. The trap for the the broken wire. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Ah, that's right. That's right. This I now is oh, okay, 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 okay. 5 o'clock. And mm -hmm. we see intima hyperplasia, and now it's embedded in the intima hyperplasia. Mm -hmm. So, why yeah, it's, well, yeah, it's not compressed by the sense? Yeah, I think it uh, one was a very big reason for the occlusion. Probably either nine o'clock is a safe top. Mm. How about the three o'clock? Yes, uh, this is the diagonal. Yeah, maybe yeah. all five of the diagonal. I think so. Yeah. It, mm, maybe, but uh, we cannot see the distal information. But even uh, as OCT was done, uh, to me the stent doesn't look perfectly expanded here. Mm. So I'm I'm still I don't use OCT uh, for. Uh, the control of stent expansion. I still think IVAS gives you the better image of the depth that you can go for. Ah, yes, I think so. The, even in, in Japan, also the penetration of the OCT is not so high. Yeah, some operator love to use uh, OCT for the usual practice, but uh, I don't like. Maybe the three o'clock is the diagonal, I guess. It's okay. Mm, yeah. mm, so, but yeah. the orifice, actual orifice is, uh, we cannot show, uh, 
どこだろうなんかよくわかんない。Very difficult to identify the, the real bifurcation that are diagonal. No, he said he cannot. As well, what we saw of the distal vessel didn't look diseased, it looked shrunk. <laughs> You think there's a sense trap there? We call? So, Kenya, Kenya, can you tell us what you are now? Oh,、uh, yes, I, I, yeah, I'm searching the、uh, bifurcation by IBUS, but、uh, I lost the bifurcation side. I was images. And I checked the angio after, after detection of the bifurcation in n i b a s Ah, これだ、これか、これか、この辺か、なんか、いや,や、こ仕事になってんな。I think it's a very, very complex morphology around the bifurcation. もうよくわからへんけど、この辺か。まあ、一回写真撮ろう。はい。まあ、anyway, I checked the angio. So, mm. Yeah, but you could see it on the IVAS, so there should be an access、uh, to this branch.、Uh, if you use a dual loom catheter, it should、mm. be easy to advance a soft wire there. So I want to ask, I want to, ask、uh, to Dr. Habara that、uh, the previous uh, the PCI, the, the kissing balloon was done or not? Kissing balloon was finally done. A finally down. Yeah,、okay. 3.5 and 2.0、uh, and 2.5 barrel. I, I was it done before the retrieval? Because I think I thought there was only one dilatation after the、oh, retrieval. Meaning that he did a kiss and then got stuck. Is that right? And then there was no final kiss. So, final kissing balloon technique. Kiss final. This angiogram. Looks that、uh, the ostium of the diagonal branch is uh, uh, occlusion. Uh, yeah, but originally,、so、I can show you the initial angiogram from the、uh, epicranial.、Uh, this is the initial angiogram. So you can see that some flow is just orifices the diagonal branch. So you can see the some、uh, staining,、mm -hmm. the、uh, right side、yeah. of the、uh, wire chip. So maybe upper side of the、uh, Contrast staining, maybe、uh, bifurcation is there. So I try to select it around there. Well, sometimes it's very easy to pass, sometimes it's very difficult. Yeah. After 1.5 balloon dilatation.、Mm. But I think it usually d e p e n d on the channel.、Mm -hmm. Channel morphology is simple, the, even though the after balloon dilatation selection is not difficult. Which, which wire are you using for the diagonal?、Uh, this is a, a shim, just a shim. Do you use the IVAS guided? No, no, no. IVAS guided is very easy to pass. No, no, no. IVAS could not show the, exactly the bifurcation. So that now I don't use the IVAS. Okay. I use just a Sasuke. Jinji.
ibata ng kasiye. You are relying on your stored images, I guess, because we, of course, don't know what is your aiming at now. Yes, but uh, I feel that some resistance, so I don't want to push it anymore. Is the patient uh, on? Uh, yeah, it's okay. An impairment with kidneys because we we could ah, see yeah, in this the patient function is okay. more contrast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you are luminal anyway. Yeah, something is different. So uh, mm. next one, right? So one way would be to, uh, you are definitely inside to open up the proximal stent a little bit better, and then you could get a good contrast flow mm -hmm. guide without risking to lose the diagonal axis. So you have your reference image that tells you uh, at which point of this convoluted ah, yes. uh, wire uh, the exit would be, okay. I guess. The epicranial is that you can see the tip of the wire, uh, remaining wire, and the light yeah. side of the remaining wire chip, you can see the sun staining. Mm -hmm. Now is uh, my Gaia fast is uh, located the, a little bit upper side of the staining. This is, uh, is okay. But uh, in lateral view, so uh, bottom side of the Sasuke, you can see the, uh, my guy next one. So maybe the uh, diagonal flow is go straight down across the uh, remaining wire chip. Mm -hmm. so, but uh, uh, my shun was uh, along, to, along with the uh, um, remaining wire chip in this view that's why did i change the wire to the a little bit harder one but i uh, personally would have preferred the xtr actually mm, this is also the one of the option i guess so but uh i'm afraid i was that... going to say X, xtr we could try but um maybe even like a neo3 which is blunt not so sharp um because there is a connection um i think we yep. could see uh, and we want to track that connection. I think one of the problems with the Gaia wire is they're quite sharp, uh, and maybe a, a, a blunt wire might be preferable. Yeah, certainly you make a commitment with the um, with, um, Gaia. Yeah. I guess it's relatively short, and I, and I think that a lot of the anti-grade wiring depends on your angiographic target, as you say, okay. okay. the collateral channel. If you can see kind of direction, you can you are more comfortable using a more penetrating wire to try to get there. If it's particularly if it's short, otherwise I think you're stabbing in the dark, and it's long. If it's long, then you probably wouldn't do that. Yeah, <laughs> Not about course yeah. is reasonable. So in, in the LAO cranial view, that wire is just the right side. The mm. LAO doesn't tell uh, much, I think. You you need to use another uh, ARIO projection. That's the issue with the biplane. Actually, the second plane doesn't help too much in an uh, LED situation. Uh, 
あ、そうなのね、ごめん。あれじゃあ、あれくらいにしょ。Yeah. I personally also、uh, have the privilege to work with a biplane, which is perfect with RCA and c i r c u f l e a t i o n なんかなんとかならない。But in LAD, we are a little bit restricted. ね、起こさないと。起こさないと。Because we can't do the, the 90 degree、uh, anymore. Thank you. あ動かさないで動かさないで。ああ、ちょっと違うんじゃないいずれにしても。What's the tip of the wire doing, Kenya? うーん、ザ・レディビット。ディファレント。ディフレクト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・レフト・And the amplification. Well, anyway, the, I want to step down. So, step down to XTR? Or...、Uh, yes, XTR is one of the very nice options. ワイヤー持ってここで LED にワイヤーを。Yes, I think it's important to make the point that、uh, the CTO crossing is not the end of the story. It's the reconstruction of the whole、uh, anterior wall、uh, supply. And that is often taking more effort and more energy. And we are not at the end of it because then for stenting, rewiring, and so on, there's still some work ahead. Hello, Bill Jolie. So it's still in, it's certainly in the structure of the vessel, but、uh, it's a little bit. Deceiving, I think. It looks like it could be in the wall.、Mm. I personally would try to put the Sasuke on the Gaia and、mm. then try to go with an XTR parallel.、Yeah. To still preserve the lumen, I think. Color bit is could be passed, no? Yeah, but it no, can be. I tried to do the s h o n again. <laughs> s h o n is safer. I hope you are inside, but、uh, it's.、Uh... <laughs> It's、uh, critical. So, if we count together, it's three bifurcations that need to be. Uh, taken care of here. Ah, okay. okay. Ah, that's、yeah. good. Okay. We are、right、good. Great. We should not try to cross the color barrel. It's okay, so. So you will bring a third wire in the other branch? Ah, yes, I hope so. It's 
yeah. yes, also is a very big branch. Probably the distal bifurcation one could get away with the single stent approach, but for the diagonal uh, LED, probably you need, you need two stents, I mm. guess. It's now you so can use one stent from the bigger branch of these two diagonals and do a two stent approach. Yeah. We I could also, already also discuss among the panel what kind of approach. I know in Asia, DK Crush is very popular. I'm, <laughs> I'm a bit lazy for that. I'm still uh, working with a, a mini crush. Oh, I see. So in Japan, in this situation, we quite often use the uh, DCB for the bifurcation. And if the small branch is flow is fine, that we can uh, left we can leave it. And but uh, we maybe we need to the two stand for the uh, LED diagonal bifurcation. You're muted, Gerald. Mm. So I think uh, so. First, uh, dilate the diagonal ostium by balloon, and then check the angiogram. And then if, if the the is wrong, the I think I should uh, do the, the two stent strategy for this case. Mm. Yeah, do you cross over the, the distal branch? Uh, cross over the distal branch. D distal oh. branch of the diagonal. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, I think. Mm. There doesn't seem to be a black beyond the distal bifurcation, but uh, certainly we should secure it with a wire. Okay. okay, we can get the old three branches. Okay, now the difficult part is to mark all three wires uh, in the right <laughs> way. I personally prefer to use three different wires, actually. I, I often you I also agree with you. So, but uh, today is uh, I use the uh, two shion blue and uh, one shion. Okay. Here I like the Terumo wires actually because they have the distal marker. Ah, ha, ha, ha. No. Uh, that makes it easier. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. You can use it with do it with different software. So Kenya, what is your approach to the diagonal? What kind of uh, diagonal LED? What kind of two stand strategy mm, will you? Maybe so. Anyway, I want to dilate it to the small button two or something. Uh, both LED and the diagonal proximal side, and then maybe uh, as the, you said, we need to the one stand for the distal uh, bifurcation and the two stand for the uh, proximal uh, the LED diagonal bifurcation. So um, maybe mini crush or crush is the is a easy way to put the two stand for this bifurcation. 
、うん、まあ、じゃあ2ミリの場の状態。とりあえず広げよう。いいよ。これ、マツオ先生。You have preferred、uh, two stand strategy in this case? Can you unmute、uh, and tell us、uh, what would your strategy be? Me? Yes. You're my、uh, coach. Yes. You have yes. a happy、yes. opinion. It is a, quite difficult to how to do the、uh, treat for this、uh, trifurcation, the bifurcation, and uh, uh, it should be necessary to check i v e r s for the diagonal to the LED. So the plug is、uh, very heavy. Uh, I think it is better to the, the AP c r o n i o n strategy for the LED and the diagonal. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, the, uh, maybe uh, the stent size for the diagonal is,、uh, I'm not sure, but、uh, if a very small branch of about the 2.0,、right. yeah, I prefer to. Uh, to avoid to the small stand for, for the diagonal branch. So, depend on the IMAS findings.、Uh, in Korea, the, nowadays, the d r o c o d i l balloon is getting higher popularity, especially in bifurcation and diffusion region.、Uh, so, in my daily practice, a hybrid strategy, such as the, using DS and DCB. Is also a good option because the stenting in the main branch and the dracoil balloon in diagonal branch also may be the good option, in my personal opinion. So, just a question on that. I mean, what criteria do you use?、Um, do you image first and look at plant burden?、Um, do you check afterwards to see where there's residual dissection? So, if you're going to use a DEB in the side branch,、um, what criteria? Do you use to decide that? Yes, thank you to your very nice question. So,、uh, in the, the de novo region,、uh, larger than three o l d after the recorded balloon, if there is some dissection or there is some heavy plaque burden, we measure yeah, the FFR. Korea, But Korea. less than three o l d usually, <laughs> regardless of <laughs> the imaging、uh, information, I just put the, the recorded balloon because. Just a very small、uh, lumen can make the possibility of the larger balloon,、uh, larger lumen gain in the, the future、uh, time. And the, we have the, also the, another chance to deploy the stand in the, the follow up a n g i o g r a m So it depends on the size of the vessel、uh, size. I would say that、uh, definitely we, we have good data from two stand strategies when the vessel size is big enough. And I would agree that、uh, probably a 2 0、uh, side branch with not much black, like in this situation, is good for a drug balloon. But if we have severe black,、uh, I would not shrink away or shy away from、uh, using a two stand strategy. Because then you can go to 225 or、uh, even higher. But of course, with kissing balloon at the end. <sighs> But the diagonal the LED、uh, lesion, I think the diagonal is a big vessel. I, I, I would dare to leave it just with a drug balloon there because we saw that it was tightly stenotic. So, Kenya, are you preparing to dilate now the diagonal and then do IVIS?、Uh, yes, I want to dilate the diagonal by two o balloon from now. And then I want to check the IVIS. I can show you. You should. 
を超えて、そっと広げよう。はい。ほど。ほう、6。ちょっと、もうクソここは広げなくはい、いけいけ。はい。はい。12、14、14、はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。はい。ははい、OK、だな、いつ、I can show you the IBAS from the diagonal? もう、まあ、ベストリーズ、シュリンキング。記録してるね。ああ、でも、ヘマトマがあるね。帰りが。あじゃあ、これはもうステント入れた方が良さそうだね。あうん。It looks like a pretty big vessel. うん。So, but the bifurcation side is morphology is very complex. So, the Dr. Wana, can we put the ミニクラッシュステンティングフォーディスカインドウィモルフォージーオブダーバイファケーション。Is it okay?Now, can we uh, uh, assess the, the size?It looked very big, actually.、Uh, mm -hmm. Surprisingly big.Can we review that again?Oh, of course.Now,、okay. uh, I can show you the. Because if, if the size of the diagonal is pretty big,、mm. at least proximal,、mm. One could also consider a, a, a culotte here.、Mm, culotte. Yes, this is a just a、uh, just proximal of the、uh, okay. This is a bifurcation. So, vessel size may be the three O.、Mm, culotte is one of the options, I guess. The culotte may be a good option.、Um, it certainly may make、uh, recrossing much simpler. I think if you do a mini crush here into the diagonal, Um, or even a decay, that the recrossing may be quite complex. Whereas, as long as you've dilated the LAD、uh, appropriately、um, first and then do a clot, it may make life simpler. I'm afraid that the distal side of the LAD stent is、uh, very complex.、Uh, so much. Double to triple of the stent、okay. strands. Okay. Yes, PCI.、Yeah. So if we use the curved stent, I, I wonder how many stent strands in the. Curved にするとさらにくちゃくちゃになりそうな気がするな if, if, if you expand it、uh, very well to the wall, then <laughs> stent strands will. Go away in the wall. That, 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 that was my point is before you did the clot, you、yeah. would have to make sure you dealt with that complexity in the distal part、yeah. of the existing stents by you know,、uh, pre dilating with an appropriate size balloon, making sure it was all、um, opposed, and then do your clot, which should then make your rewiring quite straightforward. I think the complexity here is what to do with the distal bifurcation in the diagonal because. There is some hematoma in that、uh, region.、Um, so maybe,、um, I don't know whether it's the wire that's caused a small dissection, but you can see、um, and, uh, the vessel size is not so big. So it's,、uh, it's how you deal with the, the distal、uh, bifurcation and the diagonal that's the real concern. I think I would get across the distal branch to, to control this,、um, what you described as a small hematoma. It's certainly in the wall. There is some. Pixels in the wall. No, no, no. 
Okay. Okay. So maybe ah, use. No. Okay. Uh, so maybe the dissection expanded to the yeah. both. Is start of the bifurcation. So I want to dilate the small button by low pressure. Ah, so not one, but yeah, so that's it. So yeah, what we can be sure of, of is certainly the wires are in the true lumen distal. Mm. So you have uh, the access to the true lumen in both diagonal branches. You could do already a kissing, actually. Yes, uh, yeah, I will try the kissing button. <laughs> That's not fairly complicated. You almost for treat the bifurcation there with two stents. Sure, now the situation is a little bit complicated, but uh, this kind of the, uh, at least the proximal bifurcation, already stent was deformed. So I want to use uh, uh, simple procedures as possible we can, but. Uh, <sighs> So we have uh, two two O balloons, two and uh, one point five. Okay. Mm, the hero gear, please. Wait also. Mm. Okay. One point five with a central lumen, uh, central marker. Okay. Yes, sure. Some. Just I try to wrong inflation. <laughs> Hmm. Mm. So which which branch uh, has a larger area? Yeah, of course, it's the middle one. Middle one. Oh. Middle one is larger, I guess. So. And the size is also big, bigger. But the both branch also had very good, uh, big territory anyway. But also the very good collateral from the yes, circumflex. Yes. yes, yes. So right side one is a direct connection from the uh, circumflex. So that in the worst scenario, that we can uh, lose. Uh, right side of the branch, but I don't want to cause. Mm. What the knee? What do you think? I'm not sure if you're going to go. Not bad. You have four atmospheres or what? what yeah, yeah, three, just a three. Okay. Okay, check the angio. Mm. Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay. Oh. Okay. Now this star is beta. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, the most right side one, it has a very good collateral from the circumflex. So, um, yeah, that is an important consideration. Also, uh, more frequently happens when we deal with the distal RCA to mm -hmm. check uh, to take the primary stenting towards the less supplied yeah. of the two branches. Uh, so the, I want to put the stand for the middle uh, diagonal. Do you want to use the same stand to also cover the LED diagonal? I think that could be done by using a, a, a well uh, expandable stand. I yes. To avoid too much mm. material. So, but. So maybe we should select the only the 2.5 stent for the uh, distal diagonal to the uh, LED. Maybe I want to simplify the procedure so that I still selected the mini crash. Maybe I'm not sure uh, the what is what will be happened after the cure the stenting. Uh, this kind of the uh, bifurcation. Anyway, the stent was deformed. The some material is. Uh, Corrected at some point, so I want to put the uh, diagonal uh, stand for the diagonal, and then the, uh, put the stand for the LED and F, uh, using the mini crash. It's okay. Yeah, it's uh, you. Uh, we we discussed that both options are there. Uh, I think the vessel is pretty big, actually, where the stand deformity is. That mm. uh, you could go to three, five, even maybe more. Uh, and uh, there's enough, enough room. I personally would, as uh, Scott has also favored, uh, I think I would think culotte is a, a feasible option. Makes it cleaner afterwards. And I think if you're going to do that, what you could do is you could put a short stint from uh, distal in the diagonal across the bifurcation um, to the proximal diagonal and then take a larger size stent like a 3.0 from the proximal diagonal back into the LED so that you didn't have the problem with size mismatch if you're going to do that clot yeah. yeah. if, you, if you would take a, a sign stent at 2.5 and send it to the proper size oh, okay. uh, so, but I, yeah, the I, argument. I, sometimes uh, you can uh, table some stents, right? Because uh, the synergies or, or, or the Ultramaster, because there's only two stent sizes in the Ultramaster. So the 2.5 to 3.0, they pretty much perform the same way. You can get them yes. up to a reasonable size, up to about four. And the 3.5s, you can get up to, you know, five. So essentially, I guess you can, you know, even those 2.5, 225, that's performing reasonably well in the range. Yeah, that's what I meant. Uh, the, you look for the stents with the uh, maximum compliance of this uh, of the stent structure. Yeah, my eye bus me to connect the LED color. So actually, to, to avoid shelf uh, space uh, usage, I in fact have only two Ultimaster sizes in my lab, which are then adapted to the <laughs> appropriate uh, vessel. Just two five and three five. So another problem in this case is that uh, uh, so uh, in terms of the LED stenting, so the proximal of the stent, uh, which part? I mean, <laughs> it should be on the circumflex or just the LED orifice. Mr. 
この辺からだから3ぐらいにしようか3だね3と2 so this is the LED again. Yes. So I wanna check the, the di-、uh, size of the LED. I think you didn't do the distal LED yet because、uh, you couldn't pass. Did you go now further down the LED to see、uh, where you need to land? Well,、uh, anyway, the vessel is shrinking, no plug. No plug, yes. So the, maybe anyway, the growing up later. So, so we should cover the, the all of the plug so we can do the stent. まあでも、maybe the start or end of the remaining the wire. Yeah. This is a very good landmark, the distal end of the LED stems. 多分この辺でいいんじゃない ?3 ミリは置けるでしょ、相当。うん。じゃあ、はい。で、3のどうしよう。うん。About the left main? Uh, uh... <笑> yeah. You... What does the Ivers tell us?、Uh... いや、アクソソだけ、ちょっと分かんないですか。This is very difficult. So, um, so I can show you the just this star LED. Ah,、uh, it just LED is not covered by the stents. But,、uh, of course, plug is the、uh, continue to the left main. Maybe we need to cover the, all of the region, so from the left main to the LED distal. So, but anyway, the first stent is three or the, to the middle of the first stent, previous stent. So, around there is a proximal end, is around there is okay. So, maybe 20 or something that we can put as a first wire for the LED main vessel. But here the vessel is definitely four millimeters.、Mm -hmm. Then the next one for the left main bifurcation, we can select the four stands. So, that's it. So, that's it. Anyway, play, play the dilatation show you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One milli. Something go. Oh, this is where the stand is. Here, 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 So, I want to dilate the deformed the stents inside. Yeah, ここまでいいでしょ。三号のノンコンとかで広げないんじゃないのちゃんとしっかり広げないとダメだし。I guess Nas 先生 has another option、uh, using the DCA on the Dostium of the LED. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Today is I use the seven French. No, but I, I don't think、uh, the plaque is、uh, massive inside、uh, or is, is not compressible when you have a, an instant restenosis. It's rather soft tissue there. So, Hamanaka Sensei still uses the DCA often? Not often, not often, but <laughs> so we always looking for a case that the DCA can be done. <laughs> yeah, nowadays. So actually, the DCA is only available in only Japan. So you, you are trying to avoid the stent there, right? Yeah, no,、mm, yeah, no, 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 no. Even though that after DCA, that we need to the stent, I guess. Yeah, sometimes you do the DCA and,、uh, and DB, DCB. But obviously, if it's a very big, you can put a bigger stent in after the DCA. So, for planning、uh, the session,、uh, we have a presentation that you pre recorded,、uh, Kenya.、Ah, yes. Sure. So, maybe、uh, it's a good time to, to、uh, play this、uh, presentation. Yeah. Well, you prepare the stenting, and then we can come back and、okay. see how i s it developing. Okay. 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 So let's run、uh, the presentation, which、uh, is titled let,、uh, The 
new concepts of uh, CTO techniques in 2021 by Nasu Sensei. Thank you, Chairman. So I would like to talk about the brand new concept of the CTO guide wire manipulation by optimizing the correct angle called the penetration plane view. In this presentation, all new device and software are not proved all over the world. All theories are based on the mathematical standpoint. So in the CTO PCI, guide wire crossing to the distal two remain is the most important part. However, guide wire advances in the three-dimensional blinding space to the distal target under the two-dimensional angiographic guidance. So therefore, a CTO guide wiring is very difficult. So if we have guide wire navigation, we can visualize the CTO segment and the guide wiring eventually simplified and gets easier. And we can standardize the CTO guide wiring. So how can we figure out the morphology of the CTO segment? So this is a diagonal CTO case. In our typical practice, we use the aliocranial and aliocranial to determine the which way uh, the wire should, uh, should advance the four diagonal CTO cases. These angles were used because we have thought that this is the perpendicular views. If we look at the ario, uh, ario 15 and cranial 43, uh, the true lumen and the wire position looks like this. So if we look at the, this in the short axis, the view is from the about uh, 10 o'clock. On the other hand, if we look at the uh, uh, LEO 52 and cranial 26 projection, the true lumen and the wire position look like this. So if we look at the, this in the short axis, the view is from about 11 o'clock. So if we look at the short axis view of the both planes, we can see that it is not perpendicular view as we thought it might be. So if perpendicular views are detected, the perpendicular view of the vessel axis is indicated in the, between the blue and the green plane. Just looking at the blue plane, the tip of the rider in advance towards the true lumen. So when we look uh, the same wire advancing towards the true lumen from the green plan, and we can see the distal uh, distance between the wire and the true lumen and its chip position and the chip direction. So if we then look at the wire from the horizontal axis of the blue plan, then we can see the direction of the wire passage and it's important of the keeping the wire straight. So conversion from the three dimension image is to the two dimensional image for making guide wire control simple. So next step, so we try to detect the vessel vector and then start, uh, we try to search the perpendicular projections. So coronary angiography is the projection image of the real coronary artery. Conversely, the three dimensional vessel vector can be detected from the random two angiographic images. So when we, we can put the uh, plan uh, to the screen, green one and the blue one, so behind the screen, uh, these two uh, plan is uh, intersected. So uh, this red arrow is a vessel vector. Again, in the yellow plan, the blue plan is uh, intersected. So vessel vector is a line of the intersection of the two plan. So we, uh, we have uploaded the, our software to obtain the uh, realistic and geographic projection of the perpendicular views. This is done by the inputting the angle uh, information of the two random angiographic projection and inputting the angle uh, between the vertical and the vessel axis. So LAO 88 uh, cranial uh, 59, is a calculated vessel axis. The software shows a red and a blue arrow as a calculated perpendicular view like this. So in this animation, we summarized our methodology of the, in the uh, software. 
So after calculation of the Bessel vector, using by the uh, vector projection, So perpendicular view goes along the 36 degree of the vessel axis like this. So if we flatten the 36 degree axis, the line becomes a curved like this, like a orbit line. This diagram shows a vector of the vessel detect, uh, detection by the uh, vector projections. This is what the curve looks like. In the left, the PPV is illustrated, and on the right, the OPV is illustrated. The curve within the yellow circle of the uh, both projection in the white section indicated the movable range of the CR. If the dot goes out of the white section, then the CR is an unmovable um, position. So now I introduce the chips and the tricks of the guided wire manipulation with the in perpendicular views. So we this slide shows the definition of the terminology. So we can call the blue plane as a perpendicular plane view, and the green one is the objected by perpendicular views. So if we can insert the thin plane to the CTO segment. All you have to do is manipulate wire on this plane. So guide wire uh, control is simplified and the guide wire can be controlled from the perpendicular projections. So in this animation, so uh, we showed the wire manipulation in the penetration plane view. So anyway, uh, we can insert the wire and the microcasseter in the CTO segment like this. The keeping the straight line of the penetration plane view like this. The check the direction of the guide wire objection the uh, objective plane view. Here. So if the wire chip is positioned against the target, at that time, it checks the OPV and uh, redirects the wire towards the target 90 degree until the wire is straight. So when the wire is straight, then check the PPV again. And in the PPV, so we can rotate the wire clockwise 90 degree by making the wire straight like this. So, and then check the OPV. After positioning the wire, we can advance the wire towards its target. So this is a basic requirements and procedures for setting the penetration plane. So in our methodology, so we need to uh, the straight and the short segment in the CTO uh, regions uh, to calculation of the vessel vectors. So, however, the uh, still now that we have the very big limitation of the uh, current uh, CTO system, CTO uh, PCI, PCI system. So, mechanical guide wire and unable to be changed the their direction or the course uh, intentionally. So, we need the game changer. So, now we are developing the plasma immediate vibration system. Uh, current system is the same as a single wire uh, system. So wire in the microcasseter, so wire, a plasma wire is designed the resembling the Gaia families, and the plasma caster is designed the resembling the Corsair Pro. So different point is that they had an uh, electrode. So this is a, a bipolar system. So in summary, so we need really useful guide wire navigation system in clinical setting. In straight and short segment, PPV and OPV can be selected by the calculation of the vessel vector. This strategy can simplify the concept of the guide wiring in CTO region. However, conventional mechanical guide wires cannot advance in the hard regions such as uh, classified CTOs. So that's why we need to the, uh, 
uh, new device is like such as a plasma mediated operation system. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Kenya. That was uh, a talk that I heard now um, several times, and I'm still uh, grasping to understand it. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I think uh, it is uh, a very important concept. And as you mentioned, it is the concept to, to prepare for the directed uh, penetration power of the plasma wire. And uh, just uh, before we come back uh, to your uh, advancement here, we see our, yeah, maybe a quick question. Uh, is it uh, important to have a biplane system to apply all these theories or mm. is it? Yes, for detection of the uh, two perpendicular view, uh, biplane is convenient. Uh, but the uh, single plane is okay, so we can uh, rotate, the, uh, you can move to the uh, CM. So, but the biplane is convenient to see the uh, both uh, angle once. Okay. Can you bring us up to date? Obviously, you've put a stand. Yes. Uh, there. So, I selected the uh, mini crash stand for the bifurcation. Uh, I selected the uh, 2.522 only keys for the diagonal and uh, uh, 322 for the LED main vessel. So this start on end of the uh, stand of the LED is uh, we can use the uh, uh, remaining wires at this start end. So uh, this is uh, after just after the stenting. But anyway, uh, there is some edge dissection in the LED distal looks like, but uh, yeah, I can repair it. But anyway, bifurcation is okay. So I try to select this uh, wiring for the diagonal now. So I already selected the diagonal. Hmm. So I think we saw you uh, do the rewiring. Yes. Are you considering also rewiring the, the the diagonal branch that is now occluded? Uh, diagonal second uh, di distal bifurcation, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. yes. After after uh, uh, ki final kissing inflation for the proximal uh, bifurcation, if possible, I try to select the distal uh, diagonal branch. <laughs> So there was a pretty long overlap of the stent for the crush. Uh, yes, sure, it's a little bit. The shorter one is uh, okay. So I want to dilate the uh, proximal bifurcation by the 3 o and the 2.5 non-compliant balloon. Okay. Did you do a pot before? Ah, not yet. So the 3.5 so so. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's important. Makes it often easier to get mm, inside. Yeah. We need to put it in. Which wire did you use for the rewiring? Ah, uh, Sium. Okay. The regular Sium? Yes, sure. Let the port down. Oh. 
よいしょ。これ、広がってね。よいしょ。はいはい。Do we have、uh, questions uh, to, to、uh, regarding uh, Kenya's uh, presentation? <laughs> the so probably this methodology is very important、uh, to use the plasma mediated ablation system. So that's why the Dr. Kato is,、uh, is developing uh, this uh, concept. So, in the future, maybe we can introduce the、uh, heartbeat synchronized uh, uh, angiogram one, and also that we can introduce the plasma abrasion. So, so for plasma is not risky, but uh, uh, if we can abrade the very、uh, different side of the plug, that we can make it a l e s s e r perforation easily compared with the mechanical guide wire. So the safer way is very important. So maybe、uh, next year that we can start with the clinical trial the plasma abrasion in Japan. Yeah, one can assume if you have a penetration power to get through a plaque from a sub intimal position、uh, and you direct it towards the adventitia, it might、um, easily end up yeah, in,、sure. into nowhere's land. But the、uh, penetration success rate、uh, is very high compared with the、uh, AD, current ADR Stingray system. So,、uh, penetration efficiency itself is a、uh, plasma abrasion is very nice. So, if we can see the、uh, real perpendicular view for the CTO exit,、uh, we can、uh, penetrate the plasma abrasion very easily. So, also, we are developing the IBUS guided、uh, navigation system nowadays. Maybe late,、uh, next time that we can introduce the,、uh, this、uh, IBUS guided guide wire navigation concept. これは3名ですかこれ3名ですね。はいはい。じゃあ、えっ、ー、と、2、KBT するから2点5もくださいよ。はい。はい、じゃあこれね。持ってよ。持って持って持って、ちゃんと持ってよ。よいしょ。Did you already dilate、uh, the access to the diagonal with the small balloon? No, 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 no. But、uh, this is just a 2.5. I guess the、uh, balloon can be closed, but、uh, not possible. So I、oh. used the 1.5.、Mm. Now, I'd imagine、uh, with the long overlap that it's、uh, rather <laughs> tight, and then we have all the other struts there、yeah. in the way. A lot of resistance. Just a little bit of a little bit. Yeah, I'd ask the panelists whether they have some、uh, questions towards、um, any talk. We are in the, actually in the section of our presentation where we have our discussion round. <laughs> I, I, think they... 
I think your uh, Scott and your concept of the cool up. I think I want to. I'm getting more uh, as the case progresses. I think it's an excellent idea. I think that I've learned something here. I think that was a probably a very considered approach. Is that you have to dilate your distorted LED stent from before, and then when you're reconstructing that side, even though you're prepared to lose the right branch of that diagonal because it's well collateralized in the circumflex, is that that cool up will make it much easier to cross with equipment and look like a better angiographic result at the end. And I think that's actually a very good thing to understand because you have to re-expand your old stage, your luminal, and then you're cool up because you have to really secure that osteum of the diagonal branch. I think I've, that, that's a very good way of treating it in this respect because it got even more complicated. As you say, you mentioned that, Gerald, about crushing all that stent at the awesome of the diagonal and make things very difficult. The, the, other, the other point is that you already have a stent there. So if you've re-expanded that, when you do your clot, it's very unlikely you're going to lose the LAD because you've got a stent there scaffolding it open, if you, if you know what I mean. Well, now he had uh, he has been able to open the struts, uh, so certainly that will uh, restore flow. But uh, there is then an uneven distribution of the struts around the vessel afterwards. But, but I think if you're doing any crush with DK, yeah, you have to try to do DK crush, even though we generally uh, sometimes avoid doing it because I think you have to really make sure you can get back in and optimize that that Austin. Yeah, um, actually, I'm I'm about to leave for Brussels because there is a European Bifurcation Club meeting today and tomorrow. And I think what I take from that, I'm not a oh, hardcore the member there, but what I take from the discussions is that thanks to drag eluting stents, I think uh, the decision mm -hmm. is one stent or two stent. And if you do two stent, I think it's the diameter distribution that basically should determine which uh, way you go and if it's an even diameter between both branches then culotte is has good results well, how about the the, the resinosis rate of the uh, the branch side instant resinosis I guess uh, in the in the studies it's very good because conceptually it's an advantage actually because you really reconstruct uh, the bifurcation with struts all around. I would conceptually guess that it should be a better outcome than uh, any mini crush. I guess because you you do a lot of imaging. The imaging check at the end uh, that you've actually achieved a good result would probably yeah. ensure that you get the best result possible. So I think that's probably another thing too, is to image both. Mm -hmm. And it's important to do the optimized pot. Uh, this is enough. That's a mistake often done. That you you don't get the pot too distal. Uh, this is enough. So, but that looks good so far. Mm, okay. But we are only in the second, in, in bifurcation number two. Number three needs to be dealt with, and especially the left main. Yeah. But that will be probably a one stand approach to the left main, I guess. Yeah, sure. Mm. We we have uh, a quite quite uh, data right now, but uh, uh, using the TCB for the the branch uh, with one stenting strategy, as Dr. Nas said, I think it's still working. I mean, the, right. a few cases of occlusion, and, uh, uh, but maybe the restenosis can be occur, but uh, the occlusion. Uh, is very low. Oh. Wow. Oh. 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 
what happened there oversized maybe and... you know no i don't think so the, the uh, postal button is not uh over the history age but uh something just more what the probably the, the 2.0 for, for the distal was maybe a little bit too high I would try to to go again with a small balloon and yes. uh, low pressure. Yeah. Relieve this uh, probably. Uh, maybe the maybe the dissection is extended to the the distal box. Mm. Yeah. Okay, it's okay. What's your definition? I think if if you can't restore it, of course you will do Ivis. What the, the whole case, including the history before, tells us, and as was mentioned, I think, uh, by Scott or Sydney before, that we need to emphasize imaging in these complex lesions and. Um, Unfortunately, in our place of the world, uh, it's not reimbursed, and that makes people hesitate to use okay. IVAS in complex no. lesions. And uh, to do something like that without proper imaging, I think, is is doomed to fail again. So now it's diagonal flow is fine. So I want to select the distal bifurcation. If possible, I want to dilate the uh, right side of the diagonal using by the small button to get the flow. How do, how do you treat for the distal LED? So it looks like a, a small haziness for the mm. distal part. The percentage of the LED. I yes, of course I know. So yeah, I want to check the, the IVAS data, and uh, if uh, if needed, I put the, another stand for the distal of the LED. But the vessel itself is very shrinking. So anyway, the after treatment of the this this the, uh, distal bifurcation, I want to check the IVAS. So total fluoro time right now seems to be 56 minutes. Mm, yeah, uh, yes. And we're approaching 2.0 gray. Mm. It's not much as compared yeah, to much. the to Toyohashi experience 10 years ago, <laughs> but <it's> still <laughs> two gray should be. Uh, yes. So, see, ah, itself is very simple, but uh, this is uh, maybe totally the three bifurcation we should treat it. Yeah. Uh, so, that was uh, easy access, looked yes. like. Again, a Sion? Uh, yes, sure. Okay, you, so you, your preferred wire for this is Sion, okay. Yes, for the bifurcation. Now, sometimes we need to do the XTR with Sion block, of course. Okay. Yeah, I'm... Sion Black would be my uh, first uh, idea, and often we also still use the Pilot 50. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh. 
So you take your one five balloon again? Yes, uh, for the branch of the diagonal. I think we don't need to do the kissing for the distal bifurcation. No, well, if you pass it now, why, why not? You have the two five NC already on the table. Okay. <laughs> we still have five minutes to go. Maybe oh. we already get some um, uh, wrap up, uh, maybe from the co chair, yes. the Muramatsu. What do you, your take yeah. on the case, and maybe we ask the panelists on their opinion. Yes, the, thank you for Dr. Nasser. Very interesting and educational case for the, the live demo. The, just only not for the CTO, but also the trifurcation, bifurcation, very complex uh, treatment for the. Uh, CDO plus bifurcation and uh, uh, something like a, a hematoma or a distal dissection, how to treat for this uh, uh, complex situation. It's a very educational yes. case for the audience. I think uh, it's great to be uh, appreciated for the Dr. Nasa and, the, and every uh, panelist and a nice discussion for, uh, thank you for all of us. All over you. Uh, and uh, the final uh, talk, final uh, comment from the co chair, the Gerald, please. Yeah, I think we uh, give the uh, word to the panelists. We, we don't want to leave earlier than necessary, but I think we can start wrapping up. So maybe Scott, sum up your what you take home from the case. Uh, so I think, you know, the take home from this case is that um, CTO PCI is not just about crossing the CTO, that we have to have a range of skills. Um, bifurcations are frequent. If we're going to do CTO, we want to be able to preserve all major branches. I think that's a really important uh, principle. Uh, we have to have the appropriate skill sets. Um, we've seen the use of uh, vascular imaging in this case, and I think it's critical in these sorts of cases to optimise outcomes and uh, uh, to not only prevent further um, re-occlusion of the stent, but to inform the strategy and optimally size stents and then also work out, um, you know, complications. Is that a distal uh, edge dissection? Uh, what do we need to do about it? So I think there are a lot of very good take-home messages from this case. Jong Young Lee. Thank you for uh, comment and the uh, teaching point. Uh, this is also a very the practical uh, case, uh, which is the seen in the, our daily practice. I think the, there is no simple city or case. That means the agree with the Dr. Harding's the comment. To after wiring, we have a lot of to do uh, for the, the patient the survivor. So. Uh, from the, this case, uh, also the I can learn the, the lots of the technical issue and the importance of the step by step approach, etc. So, thank you for all the uh, moderator and panel and the Dr. Kenya Nashu. Thank you, Dr. Anna Naka. Yeah, thank you very much for the nice lecture and uh, nice uh, uh, demonstration of the live demonstration. And uh, so. Uh, Maybe uh, in these, uh, I totally agree, uh, Dr. Haring and uh, Dr. Yan, and uh, because uh, so the complex PCI CTO is the complex PCI, but uh, uh, it's not just uh, passing the wire <laughs> thing, but uh, everything, including. And uh, so also in this case, I think the, the backup of the guiding uh, it's a very uh, fundamental thing, but uh, because uh, he 
Dr. Nassel selected the large car and uh, the storm back up. That caused these complex procedure easier, I guess. So uh, the educa very uh, educational case and uh, thank you very much. Sydney, hello. Thank you, Dr. Nazu Sensei, for a wonderful case. And I agree with uh, Scott as well as the other panelists. So it looks like it's a two to force in terms of the triple bifurcation case. And as you say, I think the clarity with which we do bifurcations in the CTO, uh, you have to understand them enough and the techniques that are deployed. And the imaging is so helpful here. I think that's uh, it's a key learning point for me. Look, the wires crossing with excellent skills there. And I really enjoyed the lecture as well because it's kind of like something, a uh, great future to come. And so thank you very much for that wonderful demonstration. I think we rethinks, I've learned something from this and uh, thinking about the bifurcation work, which is kind of part and parcel of what we do. You kind of be good with wiring and balloons, but the stents and how to get your long-term results. And I think there's a great discussion regarding drug eluting balloons and bifurcation, osteo and the need for stenting and two stent strategies. So that's great. Thank you very much. Very much. Okay, let's go back to Kenya. Um, you are doing IBIS. Yes, so finally I can show you the IBIS from the distal LED. So fortunately, the distal edge of the stents is not dissected. Maybe still uh, plug is remaining, and there is some flap as we can see. But uh, this is the edge of the stents. So this is the. This side of the stents. Uh, I'm sorry, the, we can see that some small dissection is there. So maybe I want to cover the additional stent for the LED distal, 2.5 or something. Yeah, the issue is that this you have this immediate drop of the size, mm. uh, which makes it difficult uh, yeah, to sure. avoid the next edge, edge detect, uh, dissection. Mm -hmm. But I, I think uh, at least a small extension of the stent yes. area is needed. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, rather sm a smaller stent and then expand it uh, afterwards to yeah. avoid this dissection. And how is the uh, the diagonal branch doing after dilatation? Uh, so I can show you the I uh, uh, Anju Anju Mishke. Yeah, diagonal flow is not bad. No, it's good. Yes. So next way I put the stand for the left plane bifurcation. And then finally I checked the LED distance again after treatment of the left main bifurcation. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank uh, you very much. Thank you to your team. I think that was as mentioned by our panelists. Uh, a very interesting case with a, bit, a nice history <laughs> before, <laughs> not a very unusual history, but uh, three bifurcations uh, in a CTO, emphasizing what all others mentioned, that passing the wire that you did very skillfully in, in both ends, diagonal and the LED, is not the end of the story. We need to keep concentrated and... Yeah get the best results. So thank sure. you very much. I thank think you very it much. Was a very educative uh, yeah. session. Yeah, see you next time. Hopefully in person. Yes. We meet all again. Yes. Thank you very much. See you next time.